Hi there and welcome back to the channel. In this video we will explore the creation of material types in SAP S4HANA. Therefore we navigate to transaction code SPRO, click on sub reference IMG and then under logistics general, material master, basic settings, material types, define attributes of material types, click on this one and here you can see the material types already existing in our system. The material type itself is used to classify a group of materials with similar attributes. So whenever we create a material, we need to choose the material type. Let's say we want to create a new material type. Therefore, we click on an existing one and then we click on copy as. We first need to provide the ID for the new material type. Let's delete this one here. The ID can be up to four characters and alphanumeric. Let's say we want to create a material type for special materials. I will call it ZSPE to distinguish it from the material types provided by SAP. And then let's say this is for special materials. Okay, over here you can see the production type group. So this field is actually used to classify materials of our new material type, either as material, service or subscription if needed. So if we insert one of the production type groups over here, this will also determine how our procurement processes work. So as you know, the procurement of a material differs from the procurement of a service. However, we are not forced to insert a production type group over here. Then you can see the general data section. Here we have the field reference. It's currently set to HLAB. So with the field reference, we actually specify which fields in the material master are set to hide, display, required or optional. I will make a separate video about the field reference in future as well. For now, we will leave it as is. Then you can see here the so-called screen reference for the material type. So currently it's set to ROH and actually this field here is used as a grouping of our material types and it will determine what screens are displayed depending on the material type when maintaining the material master record and also the sequence in which the different screens will appear. So the screens are those over here. We will talk about them in a second. Then we have the authorization group which is used to protect the special material type if needed. And we have the external number assignment without check. So this is used if our materials created with this material type should be created with an external number assignment so that we provide the number for the material ourselves. And then if we set this indicator, then the system would not check if the material number we enter when creating the master record is within the number range assigned to this material type. However, I do not advise you to check this indicator over here. Okay, next off, you can see here explant material status. So with this indicator, we can specify whether the material may be used in a particular area only. So let's inspect the search help over here. You can see we can say whether this material should be used for design, design and plan and so on. So basically, this cross plant material status will restrict the usability of materials of type ZSPE for all of the plants. And if we set this indicator and we use the material in another area, then the system will display a warning or an error message. Okay, then we have the item category group. So this indicator over here is used to determine the item category to which a material is assigned. So let's inspect the search help here as well. You can see we have many different item category groups. So for example, materials created with this material type could be normal storage location items or also returnable packaging items, cost-free items and so on. And with this indicator, we can define them as such. Then we have the with quantity structure indicator and we set this parameter depending on whether the material is costed during costing with or without a quantity structure. So basically we need to distinguish here between two different cases. If we usually cost materials using costing with quantity structure, then we should turn on this indicator. A quantity structure in general exists if we use the bill of material and a so-called routing. I will show you this in another video. However, if we usually cost materials using costing without quantity structure, we should not turn on this indicator over here. We can also change this indicator in the material master record 
at a later point in time. Then we have here one more check mark called initial status. And if we hit this check mark, then the initial status of a batch will be set to restricted. Okay, let's scroll down a bit. Next off, you can see here a section called special material types. And there are several check marks that we can set. So first of all, you can see material is configurable. If this indicator is set, we can assign a so-called variance class to the material, making it possible to use it as a configurable material. So as you know, a material can have different variants. For example, a car can have different paint, trim and engines. And one variant would be a red car, another one a blue car and so on. Configurable materials have a so-called super bill of material that contains all the components for producing every variant of this material. And by setting this material type to material is configured, we say that materials of this material type can be used with different variants. Okay, next off we have material for process. This would allow materials of this material type to be defined as materials for a process in which there may be co-products. So co-product means that during the production process of this particular product, other products will be produced as a consequence. Then we have the checkmark pipeline mandatory. So if we hit this checkmark, then pipeline handling will be mandatory for materials created with this material type. If you want to find out more about the pipeline process, I will link you another video of mine in the description of this one. Be aware that if we define this material type as pipeline mandatory, neither external nor internal purchase orders are possible for this kind of materials. In addition, neither quantities nor values are updated for these materials. Then we have the indicator called returnable packaging logistics is mandatory. And this checkmark actually specifies that for every goods movement of returnable packaging, the movement is automatically posted to the appropriate returnable packaging account. Next off, we have a check mark called manufacturer part. So this would identify materials of this material type as manufacturer parts. So manufacturer part materials are materials supplied by different manufacturers or vendors who can use different manufacturer part numbers to identify this material. And basically this indicator allows us to distinguish between manufacturer part numbers in purchasing. So we can create a material master record for each manufacturer part number and assign it to our company owned material. And last but not least, we have a check mark called FFF class. So an FFF class is a form fit function class and it's a grouping of interchangeable parts which are identical in respect of all of their technical relevant properties. So their form, their fit and their function. And those classes are used as a link to group inventory managed manufacturing parts which are interchangeably in procurement. Okay, next off you can see here a section called user departments. And here we can actually classify what kind of information we can fill upon the creation of materials of this particular material type. So we can say whether we can fill a work scheduling information, accounting information, classification information and so on when creating materials of this material type. So you simply just hit here the different check marks if you want your users to fill the master data information for these respective fields or tabs to be precise. Further down, we have a section called internal external purchase orders. In this section, we can set the so-called external purchase orders. Let's actually inspect the search help over here. As you can see, we can choose between no external purchase order allowed so meaning that for materials created with this material type, we are not allowed to create external purchase orders to procure these materials. Or we can set it to external purchase order allowed, but warning message issued so that the system will not hinder us from procuring this material, but it will warn us. Or we can set it to external purchase orders allowed so that we can purchase materials created with this material type externally. The same we also have for the internal purchase orders. So the difference between the two is external purchase orders are used to procure materials externally, so outside of our enterprise, and the internal purchase orders are used for in-house production of the material. Okay, further down we have a section called classification, where we can set the class type and the class. This is a rather technical topic, I will explain in another session. Then we have the valuation area. So here we can set that for materials created 
with this material type, the price control should be set either to standard price or to the moving average price. However, this is just the default value. In the material master itself, we can still set whether the valuation for this material should be with a standard price or a moving average price. By the way, I made a separate video about this topic. I will link it in the description of this one. The account category reference, this is actually quite important for the so-called account determination because via this account category reference, we can determine the general ledger account when posting to the materials of this material type. I also made a separate video about this topic. I will link it in the description for you. Price control mandatory. This indicator here we can set if we want the price control indicator as a default value. So if we do not set this indicator, then it will be a default value or as a fixed value if we set this indicator when the material master record is created or changed. The price control indicator itself indicates the price control used to evaluate the stock of the material. So either the standard price or the moving average price. Okay, then we have here quantity value updating. As you can see, this is actually grayed out. Depends also on other parameters. And we have the retail specific fields. These fields are only used in a retail scenario. If you like, I can also make a separate video about this topic as well. Okay, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.